could show that we did this. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. And let's start here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Pentatonic Parallel, Part 16, Exploring Visualization. Today we set out to explore visualization for what we call the brass tacks and the brass beats composition. And from the last time, we did complete adding passing chords and drum parts to what we called brass tacks, and we renamed it to be brass beats over here. And we also completed a first pass visualization of it here. And um, we've played this quite a lot today, but we'll play it at the end with the actual visualization. And we're temporarily hiding all the parts, but let's show you what's in there. The key things that we added were the, um, these passing chords and we put drum cadences in. And we, we picked up the drum cadences from the beats thing we did several streams ago and we, t we tailored the drum cadences a little bit as well. So, so this, is, this was our pretty much completed brass beats. We also acknowledged that the original fast composition that went like this we still like it the way it is, and we're calling that the original name, which is Brass Tax. And we set out today, hopefully, to visualize that as well. However, what actually happened, as it shows down here under results, is we made the brass beats. And we explored quite a bit, varying the color, intensity, and visual metaphor. Uh, we showed how you could use uh, pure MIDI files. This is using the MIDI for brass beats and it shows every part that there is. Let's just expand it for you. So down here you got the drums. There's a kick going on. There's the the rack and the floor and the snare. That's what those are. And then up here uh, the fast notes are the melody and then the vertical threes, vertical harmony, are our back uh, passing chords. And then where the where the yellow uh, green is bright, that's the backbone, and that's you see why we call it a backbone. The backbone runs through the center of the melody, and the vertical harmony is centered on the backbone. So, and that's one way to visualize it. Then we spent the bulk of today working on another way to visualize it, and we we worked with how do we show individual drums and we ended up picking a very simple method we took the kick drum which is bang 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 used the the volume of the 80 to 320 hertz and made this little squat oval turn dark every time the drum hit it and the idea we had is like a drum head is every time you hit a real drum, you can see the drum head kind of vibrate and we're representing it with a dark shimmy. And then here, um, we're using all the drums at once to, to uh, vary this, the blue line and all the piano at once to vary the bottom line. And, and we made the piano go down instead of up. And we like this because it looks kind of like a, I don't know, a spaceship zooming to the right, leaving a wake of, you know, green and, green and red stuff, cyan and magenta stuff in its wake. So that is the visualization that we completed today. And we will play this for you now. And we'll turn the mic off so you can hear it.
concludes today's stream. So ideas for next time include, um, there's a place in the score, I can show you this real quick. Part four is introduced by a slight change in the drum cadence and part five by the similar slight change and then we go back to the normal. So there is kind of a aural shift in gears in there that it seems like it might be interesting to to represent that visually. So thank you as always for your time and attention and interest and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode and as always keep on streaming.